The manhunt is now over for two fugitives charged in connection with a recent Lloydminster homicide. RCMP arrested Damian Mercer this morning. Mercer and Jeremy Fensim, who was arrested yesterday, are charged in connection with a homicide at a local motel last December. A special unit from Edmonton was brought in to help investigate. The credit really falls with the Lloydminster GIS section and the uh, CFSAU unit out of Edmonton uh, who were very uh, supportive in coming out uh, and helping us uh, locate these individuals and uh, look for them in the city of Lloydminster. Mercer was arrested this morning at the Greyhound station. No other details have been released. While considered violent, police say neither men were a danger to the community. We want to stress to the citizens of Lloydminster uh, that uh, the violence that we have been seeing has been very targeted and directed, uh, and it is not uh, random. Uh, so people don't have uh, to fear, uh, you know, the violence that has been occurring. Again, it is very much within uh, the organized crime community. Both men remain in police custody. Aboriginal activists held Canada-wide rallies, prayer circles, and blockaded roads, railways, and border crossings as part of the I Don't Know More grassroots movement. And as Anna Stanislaw explains, it was no different here in Lloydminster. It's a national day of action. From Toronto to Edmonton to right here in the border city, First Nations groups are making sure their voices are being heard. It's a rise of consciousness uh, and awareness amongst all people. And again, their, uh, the rallies will continue. There is no, uh, uh, no one, I, I believe, that could stop the rallies and the protests, peaceful protests and demonstrations. Chief Wallace Fox says Onion Lake was not consulted on decisions made in Ottawa regarding Bill C-45 and the First Nations Education Act, among others. You know, this not only affects us as First Nations people, there's an Environmental uh, Waters and Navigations Act that's in, in the process also. And that's basically, you know, a human right. Saskatchewan Premier Brad Wall is speaking out on the movement. He says First Nations leaders in the I Don't Know More movement have moved in a positive and constructive way. At the federal level, I know that I Don't Know More will be about treaty and the legislation they're concerned about. And we, we understand that, we, you know, that, but, but, at, but provincially, I hope I don't know more means that we would also be uh, uh, focused on opportunities. Meanwhile, in Edmonton, the QE2 highway was blocked by a First Nations group as part of the I don't know more movement. But Wall says these actions are not what I don't know more is about. Anna Stanislaw, Newcap News. The 23rd edition of the Cattlemen's Corral Crop Vision Trade Show is now in the books. This was the first time the show added a third day and thousands of people checked out the various booths. There was plenty to see, including a variety of crop and seed experts on hand to answer any questions. Nara Manisa was there and brings us this story. The Harbin Seed Farm has been in the Harbin family for decades. Clifford and his son Bruce spent the last few days at the Lloyd X ground showcasing their farm, which is located south of Lloydminster. Now Clifford's father started the company back in the 30s. We, we produce uh, grain just like any other grain farm, but we, uh, we, a good portion of it is, is seed production like cereal crops like wheat and barley and oats, uh, peas. Harbin says he's been yielding several calls from producers who are getting ready for this year. Well, I think wheat is the biggest focus at, the point, at this point in time. Whether it'll stay that way all year or not, it, it may, you know, it seems as though barley should have more focus than what it's getting, but uh, maybe it's going to stay with wheat. Greg Costell is an agriculture consultant and a keynote speaker at the show. Now he says one of the biggest issues facing farmers was the price of their product. What we're seeing around the world is pretty passive importer demand. Users are not chasing, they don't have the same depth of, of operating credit they did before and now we're transitioning to a southern hemisphere growing season that essentially is benign. David Tisdale manufactures liquid phosphate fertilizer, a must for any farmer. Now he says the biggest decision right now he's hearing from farmers is what crop to grow. Because last year we had significant uh, yield losses in canola with disease and uh, different things that were going on. So there's some adjustment I think going with what people are going to actually plan and seed this year. But the optimism is pretty good. Prices are good. Now it's that renewed optimism farmers hope will yield a bumper crop this year and a good reminder that Canadian farmers will once again be a major player this growing season.
Canada is a major uh, participant. Like we're producing 15 million tonnes, 17 million tonnes of world production. That's uh, 60 million tonnes. So in terms of, of global production and our role in Canada, we're very important. Naranisa, New Cap News. And a man who helped pave the way for the farming community in Lloydminster is being recognized and remembered. Hannah Canopied has more. John Deere farming equipment is a familiar sight around here, but some may not know where it began. The late John Tingley brought the first John Deere dealership to Lloydminster in 1957. For many years, Tingley Implements has been a part of the dealership and farming community here in Lloydminster. With the passing of John Tingley, he's being recognized for his contributions to the farming community by being inducted into the Lloydminster Agricultural Hall of Fame. Being a farmer and a dealership owner, he knew what people in the industry wanted. Tingley was inducted on Monday during the Cattlemen's Corral trade show. His family said seeing him added to the Hall of Fame didn't come as a surprise and they feel very honoured. We always felt that way about him, but to see the community recognize him is, is much bigger than that. Tingley spent 20 years in the dealership industry and was very passionate about it. John was a, a tremendous supporter to the agriculture industry of our whole region, both in the cattle and in equipment wise. Uh, just a tremendous asset to this whole community. Growing up around his grandfather, Shane said he learned a lot from him. Not only was he a mentor, but a well-respected community member. He was very, very honest man. Uh, he, he, he cared more about the people than he did about the, the dollars and cents of, of things. Tingley's legacy will last forever as his photo is hanging at the Lloydminster Exhibition Grounds on the Hall of Fame walls. Anna Canoffate, Newcap News.